Now, yesterday, we promised to bring you an interview with the CIMG Marketing Man of the Year, Dr. Daniel McCauley, who's group, who is group chair of the Magdan Group. Um, so why don't we hear from him now? I went up to his office yesterday uh, at Magdan Tower in East Legon and had a fascinating conversation with him. Here it is. Uh, really, it rather humbles me. It really, really humbles me. I mean, this is, and I, I'm sure I'm not exaggerating. This is perhaps the highest honor in the business um, uh, community. The Chartered Institute of Marketing (CIMG) is so well renowned. How did it feel when they told you that you were this year's winner? I wasn't so sure, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the second thought, I said, "Well, I have picked all the awards. The CIMG is what I haven't picked." So. If they find me to be the marketing man of the year, we give thanks to God. And it, it really slow my blood pressure down. <laughs> <laughs> Were you having a bit of a stressful year before this award came? Oh, well, um, as an entrepreneur, stress is supposed to be part of your, your daily itinerary. So uh, with stress, it's normal. Yeah. Tell me about what you do and why you think CIMG had their eye on you this year. Of course, you're in shipping, but could you break it down for us? What exactly does Magdan do? Well, uh, Magdan is an indigenous company, 100% indigenous. I believe that uh, we've been able to uh, do the right thing in our own industry. We've been able to keep the brand. Uh, we've been able to keep our revenues, though the turbulence in the system. Magdan also had been out there as a leader, the leader's leader. So for me, um, uh, looking back for what Magdan had been able to achieve, um, though we have not even got into our full potential. We've not even got into half of what we intend doing, and these awards are coming. It tells that we're doing something right. Mm. Once again, congratulations. Thank you. Now, not, not all of us do business at the ports. Mm. So yeah. we know of your brand, we know of what your name, but could you tell us a bit about what you do at the ports? I mean, do you, what, do you own ships? Or do you well, actually, back then, it's a total logistic company. Mm. We do end-to-end -end logistics. We operate from 2,400 ports worldwide. Um, it's an international company. I mean, um, we do mainly projects. I mean, we do projects all over the world. As I am talking to you right now, uh, there's a vessel moving from uh, Houston to um, Malabo. Um, that is what we do. In the port, locally, our local operations here um, had to do with uh, transportation. We have close to over 150 trucks on the street right now as we speak. We also do custom brokerage. Uh, by close of this year, we should have about 100 warehouses just in Accra. I mean, so far we're close to about uh, 58,000 square meter, both bonded and general warehousing. Um, we do what we call, we help our clients to um, make movement of their cargo all over the world very easy and relaxed. You do business with government as well, right? Well, um, yes, we do go business with government. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm sure I read somewhere that um, there, there's some work that you're doing for Cuckoo Board, is that right? Yes, yes, yes. Right now, with uh, Magdan happens to be the only indigenous company um, rubbing shoulders with some of these multinational and moving cocoa beans out of this country. Uh, the past season, we did what we have to do very successfully. Um, we intend bringing vessels Magdan is also intending to revive the Blackstar line. We have signed a deal with an international company to give us four vessels to start the Blackstar line. 
So very soon, uh, the document is on its way to cabinet for approval. Uh, we'll be doing it with the uh, government. I feel it, it's, it's, I am really uh, championing this agenda for the Ghanaian pride. Um, it, it's, it will, it's not only the business aspect, but I believe that uh, we can dominate in the sub-region and also be an international shipping company. Mm -hmm. So we have four vessels, we're moving cocoa, we're moving manganese, we'll be moving bauxite, we'll be moving everything that Ghana produces out of this country. This is, this is big, this is quite exciting. Yeah. But what, where, where from this, this, this vision? Because um, Black Star Line, well, they tried it, it, it didn't survive. Yeah. What is it that makes you think that you can do it uh, better than those who tried before? Well, for me, in private hands, it works better. I'm a private person. I mean, I'm not asking government to inject any capital into this. I'm doing it 100% as a private company. So I don't expect to have impediments. I mean, I, I'm driving it the way I want it to be, uh, to be driven and also to make sure that it succeeds. I mean, um, if you look at the volumes of cargo going around all the world and even out of this country, I mean, Cocoa Board last year moved over uh, 800,000 metric tons of cocoa beans from Ghana. I mean, why can't an indigenous company uh, move those cocoa? Manganese is moving, bauxite is moving, all kind of raw materials are moving even out of here. Even the oil vessels, I mean, Magdan is capable of bringing tankers uh, to the shores of Ghana to uh, uh, um, handle our own crude. So for me, um, we can, with the, with the nod uh, government is giving us and the support, I believe that we can do a lot more than even the foreign companies. Now, of course, the CIMG Award will encompass all the work that you do, um, what you do here at McDan. But as Marketing Man of the Year, obviously, they would have uh, noticed all the other things that you do as well. For example, uh, I know that you're the uh, board chair for the trade fair um, project. Uh, tell us a bit about that. <laughs> uh, trade fair is going to be an interesting uh, face, you know. Um, uh, I'm a businessman. I took the appointment for the trade fair because I see it as a project. I love projects. Um, we're going to break all the trade fair down to start it all over again. I mean, it's going to be one of the most beautiful, iconic projects in this country. I mean, we have started um, with the horizontal developers. We've got uh, the anchor tenant. And uh, it's still, the doors are still open for any, anybody who wants to have anything doing with the trade fair. You can just walk in and express your interest, which parts you want to play. So within a couple of years, you see the trade fair coming up as, as bringing its image back. Fantastic. What's the timeline for this project? Well, uh, the first phase within two, three years, we should be inviting the general public to be visiting the trade fair again. Now, this is exciting because it takes you back to Labadi, which is uh, your origin. Yeah, it? I mean, <laughs> 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 that is one of the main reasons why I said, look, let me be part of the building of the trade fair. Because if you look at uh, the location or the demography of the whole place, I mean, these cuts across densely populated areas, uh, Labadi, Teshinongwa. This trade fair is going to provide jobs for the youth. Mm. And I tell you, I mean, it's, it's going to change the lives of people. Even the granite seller in Labadi or Nungwa, who, who at least will see increase uh, in sales. Because uh, if you visit other parts of the world where there are events, there are amusement parks, where they, you see people trooping in and out, even taxi drivers. Around the vicinity, uh, have their life changed. So, for me, I'm looking at it beyond building just the trade fair, the job for the youth. As I keep saying, I'm always there for the youth. Anywhere you see me speaking or talking about myself, it's not about me. 
is for the youth that look. Ghana can be a better place if every youth changes mentality to take part of Ghana in his own hands without uh, relying on others for help. So for me, building the trade fair, thousands of jobs uh, 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 um, will begin from there. So for me, it's, it's, it's exciting, and it's going to be more exciting times to come. Now, you, your story is remarkable. You know, you've started off in, in Labadi. You've sold bull fruit. You've sold kerosene. <laughs> you've been a truck truck meet. I mean, people look at you today. You are. I'm not exaggerating when I say you're one of the wealthiest men in Ghana. <laughs> in fact, let me ask you, I don't think I've ever asked you this. How wealthy are you? How much are you worth? <laughs> you, you know, uh, when you talk about what, I see what in, the, in a different way, you know? Uh, from my background, where I'm coming from, uh, I'm still not worthy. Um, if I see everybody around me growing and smiling, and I can say I'm worthy. I'm worthy because uh, if you're my friend and I become a billionaire and you're a millionaire, that I think I have, a, that would be my, my joy. I want to see people uh, uh, um, making ends meet and making sure that uh, uh, they see the, this world in a different way. So, uh, well, I've done a little bit for myself and my family. I've done a little bit for my business, and I'm still striving to, to reach the height, you know? I'm sure uh, we can put a number on it if we want to. Oh, um, I don't want to blow your mind, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I brought it to be blown. Feel free. Oh, I mean, what, what would be an estimate? What, $500 million? Um, you are slightly underestimating oh my, my gosh. wife. So. <laughs> are, we, are we already into the billions? Um, we are getting close. Fantastic. Getting close. I mean, 800, getting, 900 million maybe? Um, just uh, one percent short of that. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. So we're looking at what? About 700 million upwards. No, there are. That there is, are. I say this because I think it's inspiring. I mean, yeah, thank you. Ghanaians to build thank wealth. You. Uh, I don't intend to push you to reveal, <laughs> reveal things, but I think it's it's uh, good to have examples of Ghanaians who are who are building wealth rather than just uh, riches. Thank you. Thank uh, so so well done on that. Uh, we we've, we've been exploring this sort of from Labadi thing, you know, yeah. where you are today, yeah. and uh, now of course full circle, you are back with the trade fair project. Um, but that means you are a government appointee as well as a very wealthy you know, entrepreneur. And this government has many examples of, mm. of that. Mm. But how do you draw the balance? Mm. You know, it, it, does it create um, any sort of conflict with your own politics? I mean, may I ask, first of all, are you NPP? I'm a businessman who is here to help this country. I mean, I see myself as a businessman. If uh, the current president call me to support in the capacity that it will not be so much conflicting as political. I will. Being a board chairman of uh, Trade Fair, um, I saw it from two, two lines, you know. I saw the place as a project. A lot of board chairmen have come to pass. They are not able to build it. And I'm an indigenous of the place. And I say, okay, why not go in there to help my people and help Ghana? I also um, saw that, look, if I take up this position, I'll be able to change lives. If I can change lives, why not? If I don't take, and somebody else who doesn't have the, doesn't share my vision, and it goes there, and for, since, since, the, since the early 90s, the, the whole place was collapsed. And I want to be, my interest there is to be the board chairman who built the place. That's my interest. And I will make sure, so far as God is behind me, I will make sure that uh, it's done. And luckily, I have a very vibrant CEO. I mean, she's, she's been fantastic. So everything is moving, and it's moving at a very fast rate. Yeah. We look forward to the future of that project. But I mean, in terms of your politics, which is what I was trying to get at, are you, um, you know, in addition to 
being a businessman working with this government, mm. are you an MPP member? Because I know that the NDC actually had you arrested, didn't they? Uh, during their, their, their regime, they had you arrested over some people that came into the country. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, during yeah, the yeah. election. Yeah, but um, for me, it's, it's, it's our politics. I don't get too much worried about those things. I mean, in Ghana, we are still young in our politics. I mean, since we are still young in our politics, uh, instead of uh, coming together to work as partners, we see as rivals. And I am looking out to the young generation changing their mentality of a politics, you know. Um, politics, we can build this country. It, it's not about me being a member of NPP. I don't have any political ambitions. You know, so I don't know about tomorrow, but uh, as I'm sitting here right now, I really don't have political, any political admissions. Mine is to help. I, I get very worried if I don't see things built. I, don't, I get very worried if I see people going around circles where they can see that, look, this can be done this way, but they're playing politics. We can't play politics with our own future. And uh, I'm always encouraging the youth to see politics differently. You don't go into politics because you want to make money. If I say I'll go into politics, I'll be too hot for politics because I cannot stand nonsense. Excuse my language. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. You see, I, I, I really want to get things done. And I can't play politics with, 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 with getting things done. So we are young in our politics. Me going through that is, uh, is normal. I wasn't worried anyway. A lot of people were worried for me, but uh, um, I wasn't worried. They are nice and uh, uh, decent people in the NDC who saw that this wasn't anything to, I mean. So um, I love the ideologies of the NPP and also um, the way Ghana is going. So. Did Why you vote not? for President Ikufado? My vote is supposed to be secret. Oh, okay. Unless you choose yeah, yeah. to share it. I mean, yeah, I mean. I'm <laughs> 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 but, I mean, in, in sort of technical terms, are you a card bearing member of the NPP? Um, why do you want to know that? Let me keep it a secret. <laughs> Let me keep it a secret. <laughs> I'll move on to that. And, and, yeah. You know, and actually, um, you, you, one of the things I know about you is that you are quite open and honest, and you, yeah. don't, you don't hide things wherever necessary. Yeah. Um, which is why I always get excited when I get a chance to talk to you about family. How are they? How is your family? How are you? How are you? Oh, doing fantastic. They are bubbling out there. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a unique type of family, don't you? I do. I yes, do. you do. Yeah. Tell us about it. You have two wives? Yes, I do. I do have two beautiful wives, and uh, they are fantastic, highly educated women, and uh, good mothers. You know. How did you convince two Ghanaian women to share you? Um, I really don't know whether because I'm very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know whether, you know, to be a gunman, to be romantic is, is real, you know? <laughs> but I mean, they love me for who I am, and uh, I treat them fairly, and I respect them. I mean, I believe that every man, the respect you give to a woman will show, I mean, they take their own decisions, and um, we don't fight. I have never fought my wife. I can't remember us fighting, and uh, we have an excellent, unique family. How many my, kids? I have 10 kids. I mean, I'm intending to have 12, so two more to go. Wow. And uh, I want to have a large family, you know. Okay. I want to create, create an empire. And how many with each? Um... Uh, five and four. Okay. And one from somewhere. So okay. for me, um, is unique, and I find myself to be a very lucky woman. And uh, uh, my wives are very smart and intelligent. Mm -hmm. They love me for who I am, not what I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true privilege there. Yeah. So let's look into the future. Um, most people might assume, just from your achievements so far, crowned recently with CIMG Marketing Man of the Year, that mm -hmm. you've done it all. Is there anything else to do? 
<laughs> well, yes, you know, what I want to do for this country, if you look at my corporate social responsibility, you can see that I'm spending a lot out there. I'm building schools. Um, I intend to take every school under tree within a couple of years. I've started from the north, Tion. After that, we'll be moving to Sablugu. We'll move to the Prongahafo region. There are some few I've targeted. Um, also, Ada. You know, I'm also the king of the north, so I have to help my people. And also Ada. So I want to, you know, Ghanaians have a certain mentality and attitude. Uh, we don't like giving back. We really don't like giving back to the society. Maybe because of where I'm coming from. I believe that um, I should be able to help this country in my own small way. I am not that rich to be spending on the other things. But if you look at for the past five years, I have held the Ghana tennis. I spent a lot on them. I'm even going to start the Coast League again to help these uh, young boys loitering around the place, give them something to do. I am also, you've heard of the Magdan Entrepreneurial Challenge. Yeah. Uh, over 7,000 young businesses applied. And uh, we are down to 15. So it will soon be on television. Um, Joy TV, you can get the episodes and show. It's reality is going to be it's going to be fantastic. Why am I doing this? I want to change lives. I want to be the CEO of CEOs. I want to be able to build businesses. As I promised the CIMG team, uh, I need your support to be able to build 20 businesses in my reign as a reigning CIMG man of the year. Uh, there are some few I have targeted already. I will support them. And I'm also creating an office. Um, I will put an equity fund to help small businesses. Some of them really don't need money. They need to be mentored and guided. That's all they need. So I am going to, if you ask, is there anything more? What is more is to change lives. I want, to, I want people to see me not how much money I have made. I don't really like that image. I want the image to be like uh, how many people are this man been able to groom or help? That is what I want to be noted for. I'm doing it already anyway. I've built some few businesses, individuals. Uh, people, are, people are running on my shoulder. I want the youth today to be taller than me. I want the youth today, immediately I provide you my shoulder to stand on, automatically you are taller than me. So those who are ready to learn, to grow, to have positive mind about this country, I will provide my shoulder for them to stand on. Well, very broad shoulders. <laughs> uh, and uh, I've got to say, it's been very uh, revealing Thank having you. this conversation with you. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you, very good, thank you. And congratulations, man. Thank you, sir. And that's This man is damn oh, rich. Ah. Uh, that's it, hey. continue, continue. <laughs> yeah, kill did you hear, news. Did you hear how much he said he was worth? <laughs> we didn't hear him. Oh, yeah, he was well, he, he, um, he, he settled somewhere between seven and eight hundred million dollars. Yeah. <coughs> He's a very rich, <laughs> but he's, he's also a very good giver. Yes. That much yes. I know. He, yes. he really Seven hundred what? Between seven and eight hundred million. <laughs> Does he own one of the banks? It's only four hundred million guys. We are struggling, I, going up and down. Yeah. And this is collapsing. Not, worth, though, yeah. not even the value of his business. <laughs> I think you said um, what? 700, 800 million. Mm. We're better off with Magdan okay. in our Kajiko. system uh, mm. because you know he's made a lot of interventions in the, in a lot of <laughs> lives. Yeah. So yeah, we Great celebrate life. him as the CIMG yeah. Market and Man of the Year. Six, but he's got seven. two women. <laughs> two wives. Yeah. Yo. Is there is there room for more? Did you, you ask him that? Third, is there six, room for more? Seven, I don't see why not. Uh, uh, if my husband two, would allow me. Three, four, <laughs> Six, seven, eight. You say eight. Uh, what is he doing? One, two, He's still two, counting two, the money. <laughs> I think you should take him to see him. 
It's going to do. <laughs> yeah, he can teach you how to make how to make money uh, like Roland, that. Here's something for you though. Just I'm selling small it. small okay. things no, so no, people no. cannot buy. Listen people to me. Listen ready. to what I'm going to read next. As well as you know. And follow it, <laughs> and then you'll be better. The so bad. as a leader, you must learn to keep up in a rapidly changing world and be well prepared to <laughs> respond to opportunities. Left to Lead is a leader development experience designed to equip you with perspectives and practical tools you need to steer your organization or business forward. Learn when and how to make a leadership shift from world-class leadership experts and return to your office ready to implement your new action plan and renew passion and commitment. Live to Lead will be addressed by renowned leadership experts, including John C. Maxwell, Daniel Pink, and Tyler Perry. The events will be simulcast in Ghana at the College of Physicians and Surgeons, Rich Accra, on Friday, 12 of October 2018, at 12 30 p.m and vip participants will also get the opportunity to learn from ghana's celebrated playwright and ceo of riverman productions uncle abel whites at a pre-event dinner and talk on thursday 11th of october 2018 at the sweet spirit alisa hotel now here's how to be part uh, you can get a ticket a vip ticket for 500 ghana cities regular for 200 ghana cities and students is 100 Ghana cities. And you can pay via mobile money on 055-051-5391. 055-051-5391. Or you can do so through Ecobank on this account number. 37 1745-3801. And for tickets, please call these numbers 055-051-5391 or 0540-708-433 and 0277-669-178. This event is brought to you by the Center for Transformational Leadership in Africa and supported by Goldfields Ghana. And I want to be part of this lift to lead uh, to hear Tyler Perry mm -hmm. and become like Magdan afterwards yes I want to be <laughs> the next Magdan would you have two husbands if, no if you had that much I don't think I'll be able to manage maybe I'll flirt a little bit with one or two yeah just that just that oh yeah well he says he's romantic <laughs> he's very rare a girl romantic yeah. man <laughs> fascinating stuff